Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to show you a fantastic tool that I love using in my courses and in my webinars, and it is called the Python Tutor. And it's at pythontutor.com, and it's written by this professor named Philip Wall. And he has just done such an amazing job with this tool. Um, it is not a debugger, but it is a visualizer for your Python code. And it's very deep. You can do all sorts of things with it. I just want to show you a few of the things that you can do. So when you go to pythontutor.com, it opens with this page that's sort of like describing what it does. It doesn't do it justice, I tell you. So I'm going to click on start visualizing your code now. Okay, and now I can type code. And actually, you can type code in a bunch of different um, uh, versions of different languages. I'm going to use Python 3.6. And no, this is not the latest version, but 3.6 is good enough for what we want to do. So what I can do is I can then write some sort of code. So let's do some simple code. I'm going to say here uh, for, for one number, let's do this, numbers equals 10, 20, 30. For one number in numbers, and we'll say here print one number. Nothing too exciting, right? And we can even say here, let's do this. We'll say here total plus equal one number. And I'm going to make total here an integer. I'm going to say here uh, total equals zero. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to say here, print total. Okay, now we go to visualize execution. And this is where the magic really starts. So if I now say next, you can see on the left here, I have my original code. On the right, we have sort of a bunch of stuff. We have the output that's going to be printed. And we're going to have frames and objects. We're not going to see really too many frames. You'll see that in a little bit. So numbers is defined as, oh, look at that, the global frame. That is to say global variables. And numbers is a variable, and it refers to a list. And how often do people in Python not understand, because it's hard to understand, that everything is a reference, that variables are just names that refer to data. And so here we see that. And we can see that our list is 10, 20, 30, with indexes 0, 1, and 2. And now we say total equals 0. And now we're going to iterate over our list for one number numbers. So one number is now 10. We'll add that to total print one number we print it then we go back now it's 30 and then it's going to be 60 and now we print out each of the numbers and print the total and it's great now this is nice and sort of simple but you can imagine and in fact i'll show you much more complicated things so one of the classic things that people get wrong in python is they think that if they have a uh, if they use a list as a default that that's okay but it's definitely not. So I can say here, for example, def add one. We'll say here, you know, x equals b list. And I'll say now, uh, we'll say x append one, and we'll say return x. Now, if I say my list equals 10, 20, 30, I'm going to say here, add one, my list, and say print my list. Now, let's do this this simple way, and then we'll get to the default stuff. So what happens with our execution? Well, watch this. We're going to define our function. Remember that functions are objects. So function is an object here. Add one. Well, add one is a name that refers to this function object. And we see the default. We see that the default argument, right, refers to an empty list right now. And, well, well x. x is our parameter. x is a local variable. And watch what happens now. I'm going to define my list. So add one is here. My list is here. And now we call add one. And what happens when we call a function? We get a new stack frame. So these are local variables to add one as opposed to the global variables. So add one is a global variable, but inside of the call to add one, we have our local variable x. And you can see that the local variable x and the global variable my list refer to exactly the same list. And so now when we say x.append, yeah, we're going to modify x, but we're also modifying my list because they are both referring to the same object. And then we return x, and it even shows the return value. And we return that, and our function uh, scope, right? Our local scope, our stack frame goes away, but our global frame is still there, and my list refers to 10, 20, 31. So if you've ever wondered, hey, does Python pass things by reference or by value? This is a good way to understand it better. Understand actually, it's neither of the two. It's something called call by sharing. We can talk about that another time. And then I print my list, and I get indeed 10, 20, 31. Great. But what if I change my code? What if I don't actually pass my list? What if, in fact, I get rid of my list altogether? And I'm going to call add one once, twice, three times. So now what's going to happen? 
And this is, of course, the demonstration of why mutable defaults are a bad idea. So I'm going to define my function. Once again, we can see that this function keeps around a default argument for x. That's a list. And we're going to call add one. Well, that's okay. We open up a new local stack frame. x in add one is referring to that same empty list that we have for our default. And what are we going to do to it? We're going to add one to it. We're going to append one. And then we're going to return x. So far, so good. But look at this. After the first call to add one and before the second call to add one, we can see that the default has changed. That default is now a list with the value one in it. So now when we call it again, it's already starting with one. Now we're going to have one, one. And then we call it a third time. We get one, one, one. And so basically what you can see is visually what's happening with the default, what's happening with the list. Let's look at one more example, and then I'll show you a more advanced thing that you can do with a Python tutor, and then I will let you run with this. Two more advanced things. So first of all, let's look at a dictionary. So if I say here, uh, let's do this. Um, def return twice value. All right, and we'll say here d and k. And we'll say here uh, if k in d return d of k times 2. All right, and then otherwise, we can just say return we can do a well that's fine return um no such key yeah. not the best thing we should probably use a, an exception but i'm willing to live with this okay and then what i'm going to do is say d equals a1 b2 c3 and i can say here print return twice value of and we're going to pass d and we'll call it c and i'll say print return twice value of we'll say a and then I'm going to say it for, oops, I'm going to say it for Q as well. Okay, let's do this. So now we're going to run it. And now we're going to, oh, invalid, uh, invalid, what did I get wrong here? Line 10, print price value of, oh, because I didn't close the parentheses. It does give you error messages, you just need to learn to read them. Okay, now it's going to run. It'll give me a little thing here to close. Okay, so let's now define our function. And again, the function is a name that refers to a function value. And we're gonna define our dictionary. Look, the dictionary is set up as a two column table. It's not exactly that in memory, but it's a good way to think about it, right? And now we're gonna call our function. So we get a new function stack frame. We get a new little thing here. D, the global D and the local D are referring to exactly the same thing. And K is a local variable that has the value C. So now inside the function, we can say, is k in d? Yeah, we can see very clearly that c is a key in d. So we're going to return d of k times 2. We return 6 and print 6 on the screen. And then a, very good. Right, we're going to return then 2. And finally, q, is it in there? No, it's not. So we're going to return that string, no such key, and it prints it out. So I want to show you two more cool things. First of all, let's say you want to share this with a friend. So you can click on generate permanent link and it gives you this really crazy, ridiculously long URL, but it works. Basically, if I copy this URL and I paste it into a new tab in my browser, it's going to give me exactly that same code and allow me then to run it. So I can share this and I do this in my courses, right? It gives me the code and I can just run it and it'll even take me to the same point that I was at before, which is pretty snazzy. Um, another thing you can do is you can say, well, let's edit this code again. And now let's go to live programming mode. And live programming mode, it's gonna, it's gonna run the whole thing. You don't have to step through it one piece at a time. And so now what we can do is a sort of experiment with it. It's gonna run through everything, print through everything. And I can say, well, what if I wanna add something here? What if I wanna say D colon 10, 20, 30? What would it look like if I had a value in my dictionary that was a list? And there you go. D is a dictionary, refers to A, B, C, D here, and D is a list. And then I can say, well, what if I want to play with that a little bit? So I can say here, you know, print return twice value of D and D. Will that even work? Let's find out. Actually, it will. You can multiply a list by two. It's a little weird to do, but you can do it. And so I have found the Python tutor just to be a joy to experiment with. I do it a ton with my courses. Um, and they say that the visualization really helps them to understand things better. So I strongly encourage you to try out the Python Tutor, um, experiment with it. There are things it cannot do. So it has a limited number of modules that are available. Um, I mean, it has the, the um, you know, most of the 
um, standard library in there, but not the things that might be dangerous. It won't let you work with files, for example. Um, and it is dragging a little bit in terms of versions. Um, and there are other limitations. But on the whole, on the whole, what a fantastic project. What a fantastic uh, resource. And I encourage you to try it out. OK, other things I encourage you to do. Contact me with your questions on Twitter, via email, wherever you want. And don't forget that every week I provide new articles about Python with my Better Developers newsletter. Sign up at betterdevelopersweekly.com. I hope to see you there. And I'll be back here soon with more Python tips.